Hey guys, this is Trent Spider, and this is going to be a in-depth guide on the uh, trends here. Uh, just going to be a quick video, show you guys how the uh, trends and show trends feature works, um, and how it's connected, and how all the trend preferences affect your trends, and how you can use them to edit your trend lines. So, first things first, what's going on with every single Trend Spider chart when you've got your trends button turned on? and our show trends is on most relevant, is TrendSpider is finding every possible trend it can, scoring each trend line, and putting the top 1% scoring trends on your screen. So that's what we're looking at here on this one hour spy chart right now. Now we've got this other filter here called more lines or all are unfiltered for if you're curious about what lines we're finding but leaving off the chart. So if I go to more lines, it's going to give me that top 1% plus a few other trend lines that don't violate price as much. So if you wanted to add these lines to the screen, you could by just double clicking on it. It's going to lock that line into the chart. If you went back to most relevant, those other lines disappear. That one we've locked in is on the screen. Same thing for the all or unfiltered, except it's going to show you every single trend line that we're finding on the chart with our algorithms, right? This is what TrendSpider is filtering through, um, scoring and showing uh, with that most relevant, right? And again, you could go ahead and double click on any one of these lines, lock it into the chart, go back to most relevant, those other lines disappear. Now, you might want to, you might be asking yourself, you know, how do we score these trends? What do you mean score? What do you mean top 1%? Well, top 1% is we devised a scoring system that uh, is based off the peaks, valleys, troughs, bounces, violations, right? So we look for the, um, so we, Look for the lines with the most touches, right, with the least amount of violations. And then we put the top, one, you know, we order them and then put the top 1% on your screen, right? So that's how we're scoring these trends and putting them on your chart. Um, now, we've got these trend preferences, and that's over here on the left next to uh, trends button. Click the three dots and this menu pops up. We've got analysis type, drawing input, and gaps. Uh, right now, I'm on analysis type original. What that means is it's mainly going to be showing you the longer term trends on the chart and it's usually going to give you the least amount of trend lines on your screen. So uh, that's what we're looking at right now. Then we've also got enhanced. Uh, this is going to give you the most amount of trend lines on your screen and it's usually going to give you those long and shorter term trends. Notice how we get a lot more trend lines on the screen. Uh, with this analysis type, you're generally going to have to pick and choose the trends you want on and off your chart. You can do that quickly by holding down shift and then just left clicking on the lines that you think are relevant. Uh, you've also got this option to right click on them as well and hit remove all, um, remove this trend line. Or if you see a cluster of lines like this, like a cluster of pink lines, you can right click and hit remove all related trends. And it'll take those trends off this chart here, right? Uh, then you've also got the uh, standard analysis type. And this is going to be a variation between enhanced and original. Now, uh, what uh, I recommend this analysis type over enhanced because it gives you those long and shorter term trends, but with just less trend lines to choose from. So you can see here um, that we're basically at the analysis we would have arrived at at the end of editing all those lines through an, on the enhanced version, right? But we just ended up here with uh, we ended up with it here on standard. Again, you can hold down shift and edit the chart a little bit if you wanted to. And then let's say I accidentally deleted a line, like, oops, I deleted my support line. Well, you can go ahead and, um, and hit restore all up here in the top left, right? Click on that, and it's going to bring those trend lines back on your screen so you, can, uh, so you don't have to uh, lose those trends, right? Then you've also got the ability to draw these trends from the wicks or the bodies. So right now I'm drawing them from the highs and the lows. Well, we can change that make and draw these trends from the opening and closing price actions instead. You can see the trends change a little bit here. And, uh, we're and this will affect your analysis, obviously, right? Because we're drawing these trends from different data points. So just keep that in mind. And you've got that option. Now you've also got the ability to respect or ignore gaps in price. And right now we're ignoring them. But you can um, respect gaps in price by switching this to respect, hit apply. And you can see how this completely changes our chart here. And uh, you can see when TrendSpider is detecting a gap in price uh, when this bottom line here changes colors from black to white or from white to black. So you can see this gap up. 
This bottom line here changes colors, right? We're detecting that gap in price. Another gap up here. Now, you might see this smaller gap here. The reason why we're not detecting that gap is because the mathematical definition for, uh, uh, for the default here, uh, default gap detection, is the gap needs to be larger than the um, three t than three times the 14-day average true range, right? So we find the, we're always calculating the 14-day average true range, and then the gap needs to be three times um, bigger than that, right? To be it considered a gap in price. Now, what, how, why is the trends changing? Why is this affecting my trends? Because the theory is with gap detection in our platform, at least, that when price gaps up or down, it gapped for a reason, right? Because there was new information in the market, and uh, new information caused a spike in pre pre and post market sales for price to gap up, right? Or gap down, or or, or uh, you know, gap in general, right? So if um, so, the theory behind that is new information is in that new price. So therefore, we want to draw trends only from that new price. So you can see how now we are not drawing trends across any of these gaps, right? We're only drawing trends from what we call this island of price action. When we when price gaps, it creates a new island of price action. Then um, when the price gaps again, it separates that island. So this is, as you can see here, one. A nice little island of price action floating there. So that's the gap detection, um, detection you guys. Now one more last thing that is fundamental to the trend spider charts is this thing called the truth and analysis timestamp and that's down here in the bottom right hand corner of my screen. It may be at the top right hand corner, top middle corner, top um, top middle, uh, middle, top bottom sorry. Um, but it's on the dark theme charts it's this yellow tab. On the white theme charts it's a blue tab. And if I read this off to you, it says, Truth and Analysis Timestamp, October 23rd, uh, 1953, my time. Uh, I'm in a different time zone than Eastern, so it's going to be a little bit weird. But basically what this is saying is that a few uh, or an hour ago, TrendSpider drew these trend lines on this chart. Well, um, if I go to another chart that I haven't updated here in a little bit, let me uh, go to a smaller time frame so it looks more significant. So... You can see here, well, the trends are being respected here. Let's go even smaller. Okay. All right. Well, the point of this matter is, so you can see here at the bottom of my trend lines here, the truth analysis timestamp was last um, updated on October 23rd at 16, um, 1616 my time, right? So all of this new price action that TrendSpider has um, not um, that this that trend spy, that this chart has produced, right? TrendSpider didn't know um, at the time that it drew those trend lines. It knew everything to the left of this point in time. So all this price action to the left, it used to draw these trends on the screen here. So let's say that price came up and broke through this line, or or um, fell quite fast, and we're all the way down here at 179. And right, these trends are broken. And I wanted TrendSpider to take into account this new price action, right? Well, you could hover over this truth line and click refresh and lock, or you could do a control R on your keyboard. It's going to take into account that new price action and draw some new trend lines based on that for us. So you can see here, we're drawing some new trends based on that new price action, right? And so that's the trends, guys. That's the show trends, and that's how you can combine these tools or all these little features to use TrendSpider effectively with its trend lines. Um, if you guys need a question, there's always this chat with the human button here. You can ask us a question, and uh, if you got also, you can email us or give us a call. So um, once again, I'm Zach. Thanks for hanging out, and we appreciate you guys.